Sugar Joy. Today I am going to show you how I made this super cute, fluffy, bright, and sunshiny blanket. And my little adorable nephew, Grand Few, that I like to call him, um, James, was the one uh, who helped me out at the beginning of the uh, video with some crochet modeling. So anyway, this is a variation on um, the Spicy Stripes blanket, which is on my playlist. So all you have to do is crochet seven rows of single crochet. And then you follow that by one, two, three rows of back post single crochet with the single crochet in the in-between. And then you just repeat that pattern throughout. And then I will show you how I hid my ends in this nifty little trim. And of course, how to do fun fringe if you're interested. And for the complete pattern, you can head over to daisyfarmcrafts.com or I will leave a uh, link in the comment section yarn that I used for this blinky is my trusty Karen one pound and I used the cream the white and then I used uh, one skein of the um, Red Heart Super Saver in cornmeal and you probably could get two blankets of this size and the blanket is three feet by or four feet by three feet so okay this is a great easy pattern. It's your basic stitch, the single crochet, and we just start with a slip stitch knot. And then I am using a tr my trusty nine millimeter Susan Bates hook. And um, I do get a lot of questions about using this size of hook with this size of yarn. However, I have found as a beginner, be beginning crocheter myself that, um, you know, I started uh, about a year ago my sister Tiffany of Daisy Farm Crafts started teaching me and I found that I crocheted tight and I liked using the bigger hook and then I just started designing with the bigger hook. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use a smaller hook on this pattern. You certainly can. Just with a smaller hook, you are going to have a um, denser blanket. And I actually quite enjoy the blanket being nice and, um, you know, it has a really nice loose drape and um, just a personal preference of mine. I just really like the way that it turns out. The other thing that um, I recommend for beginning crocheters is to really take your time doing your initial base chain because your initial chain will determine, um, you know, really the, the tension quality of the rest of your project. And for this project, the beginning chain count was 100. Then you return with your single crochet, which is go in, pull through a loop, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. And we just do this nice, easy, relaxing stitch for seven rows. And when we 
do our last single crochet of the row. We chain one and we turn. And then we work into the second space. We don't work into the chain, we work into that space or the first single crochet space to start our next row. Now, for a beginning crocheter, when I first started, my uh, challenge was remembering one, to do the chain one, and to not skip that first space and inadvertently work into that space. Because if you start having sides that, um, you know, curve in or lean in or, you know, start to decrease, you can be sure that you have either forgotten to do the chain or you've worked the wrong space. It'll stay nice and square with the chain one and working the first single crochet space. And here it is again, working our last single crochet, chain one, turn, and then we work into the first space, another single crochet. Okay, so we are gonna pretend that this is seven rows of single crochet, and we are ready to do our color change and our stitch change. Now, I do a lot of clipping so that my uh, ends don't get all tangled up. Color change here, and the way that I do my color change is um, you know, normally you chain one and turn. So instead of doing the chain one, you just lay the new color over, pull through a loop, and that counts as your chain one. And then our first stitch will be in regular single crochet. And then we're going to do a back post single crochet. So you actually end up working kind of like sideways and it can take a minute to get the, you know, the hang of this stitch, the rhythm of this stitch down. But basically it's like a scooping action. I push this out of the, push your yarn out of the way, go through the back, around the post, so you kind of weave, make this little mountain or V, depending on which way you're looking at it. And then I sort of pinch it, and then just pull through and do your regular single crochet. So go around the post, pull through, so we get to our last post on the row and we work our single crochet back post single crochet and then this last space here you work a regular single crochet chain one and turn and you see we have our lovely raised single back post single crochet row and then you work a single crochet into the first back loop single crochet. Actually, it's into the into the single crochet spot from the row before. And then the remainder of the row, you work behind into the row of single crochet. So do you see that you do not work into this at all? You work into the row of single crochet spaces behind the row. Okay. 
So the the last we're here we just I just did this single crochet here. So you can see it can be a little, you know, challenging to figure out where exactly you work your last single crochet. And it's right on top here. It's your it's your um, you know, turning chain space that you did for the single crochet. And you just go ahead and do your regular single crochet chain one and turn <clears throat> and so you know another good thing to keep in mind is a single crochet at the beginning and at the end of every row and on the back post rows on the rows that you're going to be doing the back post you'll be looking away from the stitch And so off you go. That was a front post single crochet. Back, do the scooping action. There we go. Pinch your V and all right. So here is an alternative to weaving in ends. So here we are, we have ends that need to be weaved in and this is a way I discovered that you can do it. So you find your corner, pull through whatever color you wanna do. I thought I'd use white because it'd be easy to see. And then, okay, let's just get this started here because, all right, so you wanna just, attach here and then you take your ends you kind of line them across the top of the edge that you're going to be doing your single crochet trim on And you do you don't want them like bulging out it it took took me a little practice to like figure out how to do it so it looks nice but you kind of keep them nice and and taut and you just do your single crochet row around the tails And so they get hidden in underneath the single crochet. Now, you don't have to leave them this long but you do want to have them long enough that um, they lay they lay flat, you know, that they won't poke out. Seems to me like it worked really great. So, oops, I forgot this one. All right. So I think ideally you want to, you know, work them all from one side or, you know, work in one direction or whatever, but this is at the end here. So it takes a little more finagling. And then, all right, so you go underneath here. All right, so I'll just pull that one a little bit.
And I just did this for the uh, another blanket that I made, and I really love it. I, I think it's a total game changer for me. Because weaving in ends, it does take time, and um, it's, you know, not that satisfying. And this is nice because, oops, I just put that in the wrong place. Because you, you know, take care of two things at once. So there you go. So we've got a nice finished edge there. And then for the little bits that are sticking out, give them a pull. A little bit of a pull. I just, you know, for the purpose of them, like, kind of springing back into place and to, you know, staying lined up. And then you just have one end to weave in. And I think it looks pretty good. I mean, you really, you cannot see those stitches. So there you have it, an alternative to weaving in your ends. So the last thing we're going to do is a fantastic fringe. So I've already weaved in the ends. We've got my one row of single crochet. And for um, the fringe, I recommend doing two rows of single crochet. I just think it gives it a, a little nicer look to it, but you can just do one. And so we do a turn, do a slip stitch, and my favorite length of fringe these days is 10 and also I size down to do my and I just wanted to point out that I size down to a five and a half millimeter hook and I use that for the border and for the fringe so we just chain out 10 and we return with a slip stitch and um, I go right back down to the original space I started from, slip stitch, go to the next stitch, another slip stitch, and then off we go. Chain out 10 or 15, or 20, or, you know, five, whatever, however, you know, fluffy you want your fringe. or how. And so that's it. Easy peasy. And if uh, you end up making a blanket, I'd love to see it. Send me an email at sugarjoy at gmail.com. And thanks to my adorable James for hanging out with me. Say hi to Tallulah. Thanks for stopping by.